Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette, this is Good Isle Games, and today I'm asking the question, would you rather buy, bin, or borrow these three board games? Hi everybody, welcome to episode two of Would You Rather, and today I'm going to pick three board games at random from my collection and decide which one I would rather buy, borrow or bin and I'm going to use the BG stats app to choose three games at random so let's start with this so game the first a pleasant journey to Nico game the second smartphone ink and game the third the quacks of Quidlinburg right so let's go get the games and then I'll give you my thoughts on them I'm not gonna lie folks I think this is going to be kind of tough to do um but right we'll we'll jump right in and I'll tell you a little bit what the games are about so maybe you know hopefully you'll play along at home with me um so the first game is A Pleasant Journey to Nico and I picked this up at Essen a few years back because I was really intrigued by the theme which is the idea that you're making a trip to the Antarctic to see penguins I hope I have the right I think it is the Antarctic for penguins not the Arctic I think it's Antarctic. You're, you're going to, you know, to, to, you're going north to see penguins, but you want to do it in as ecologically sensitive a way as possible because you don't want to create any pollution that would kind of, you know, ruin the penguins' habitat. Um, I really like the notion of this game. Um, what it is is a, a, a tableau builder um, with action selection with dice. And what you're trying to do is kind of, I suppose, build as much stuff without gaining or without creating any pollution. And you build this beautiful vista kind of out of your cards um, for where your boat is traveling. Um, this is a, a really interesting game. Um, firstly, let me say the components are outstanding. It's got the most amazing player boards I want to say ever. They're made of something that almost feels like it's squishy but it isn't but it's still cardboard. It's wonderful. You get some great um, penguin meeples, you get some very oddly shaped fish meeples too and all of the art and the cards and things like this are just it's beautiful right it's beautiful. It's quite a busy game there's a lot going on because you can kind of combo actions into other actions with your dice and your money so you can end up doing all sorts of things on a turn. Um, I like this one a lot it doesn't get played as much as I would like it's not kind of the first one I suppose I pull off a shelf but it's incredibly unique I've never come across anything quite like it um so I quite I, I like that a lot um so second on our list of games to look at is smartphone ink and this is a game well about selling smartphones it's an economic game and basically what you're trying to do is make as much money as possible selling out these smartphones um, while also kind of making sure you have the logistics available to to do this and you kind of the map um, is the board is the map of the world and you're kind of going into different places and determining you know what prices you can sell your goods for um, you also have a player screen which has a multiplication table on the back of it which really wowed me when I first saw it um, but it is that kind of game where you're totting up kind of lots of money in that what is um, very interesting about this one is that to choose your actions what you're going to do in a round there are basically um, five different phases or so I hope it's five but it's close to five phases each phase you can do particular things and to choose um, what you're going to do in each phase you have these little boards with the symbols for each phase you kind of cover them over each other um, yeah you cover each you cover them over um, so that the ones that are showing are the ones that you're going to activate so you can get you know kind of multiples of particular ones or make them better and I think that's quite interesting um, it's a very timely game I'm not I don't know I've never I've not been a huge fan of it even though I think it is rather good, but I almost think it is too basic math um, for me sometimes. Um, but yeah, it's I think it's a well put together game and it's very, very polished. So I, I, I do like it a bit, but it never had that kind of, I don't know, big appeal for me maybe that it does for um, other members of my household. Um, but that is Smartphone Inc. Okay, so third out of the, the box, out of the phone, um, is the Quacks of Quidlinburg. Um, and this is fairly popular by now. I, I'd like to hope most people have heard of it, but if you haven't, ah, you're in for a surprise. So the Quacks of Quidlinburg is a game about making potions in which you are a quack, you know, you're someone trying to brew up something. Uh, and what this translates to in the game is that you 
you will have a bag into which you put all of the items that you're going to pull to put into your potion. So your, your board, player board is a potion and you pull these items out and they'll have numbers on them and that's kind of how far you'll be able to move them around in your potion and you want to build a big potion, right? You want to get it all the way around the edge. The problem is that there are particular items in the potion that you don't want too many uh, or in your bag, you don't want too many off in your potion. And if you draw too many of them, your potion explodes and you don't get to do any cool stuff. Um, so how the game goes is that the first portion is you're building your potion by pulling items from the bag. And then the second um, portion is kind of like um, getting money from your potion so that you can buy further ingredients to add more things to your bag. It's a really fun game. Um, I also think it's quite unique. It's it's push it's push your luck, obviously, because you're trying to say like you know will I will I go again? Will I pull something out? What are the chances of me hitting? And um, one of those cherry blossom things you don't want to hit to, that will explode your potion. Um, so yeah, it's fun. It's a good group activity as well. Um, I think a, a number of people will complain how the kind of look based it is, but my argument is you're drawing stuff out of a bag. What were you expecting? Um, this is just kind of fun. Um, there's some nice little kind of catch up things in it as well if you're near the end there's like little rat tokens on the board that give you kind of a little leg up but not a lot um and i love the fact that the different ingredients do different things when you pull them out of the bag so blue ones often draw you cards um and things like that and so there's all kinds of bits and bobs going on here to enhance the game um yeah i've always liked quacks i th just think it's it's rather unique and special um you know and and sure it's not a deep strategy game but i don't think it's it's trying to be either um you know i think i just yeah i just think it's fun um right so here we go so start put it in your mind what would you do what would you do so which one would you buy bin or borrow god this is really really tough um Allow me to also state that I own all of these games. I bought all of these games. They're in my collection still. Um, so I still love them. I still think they're great. Um, I hate making tough decisions, but I guess that's the point of the video. Okay, so I'm going to go with, I would buy Quacks of Quidlinburg. Um, I think it's a good game and I think it's great to bring around for new players as well, or when you have a group of people. I think it's one of those fun games everyone can just kind of get behind, so I'd buy it. I would borrow A Pleasant Journey to Nico because I don't, I don't play it as much as I think I should, but I do like the idea of being able to play it. See, this is horrible because this leaves smartphone ink that I would bin it. Oh, I suppose I might have done. Um, my, my husband really likes this game, so it's part of the reason it's here. Um, and I think it's a really, really good game. It just didn't click necessarily with me. I'm like, would I miss it if I didn't have it in the collection? And my answer is I probably wouldn't. Oh, that hurts, that hurts. That really, really sucks because I think these are all fantastic games. Um, so yeah, so that, yeah, that's what I would have, uh, that's what I would have chosen. Um, I want to hear what you would have picked. Um, and if you haven't heard any of these games before, which one sounds like something you might want to try? Let me know in the comment box below. Um, so thanks very much for tuning in. Um, if you keep liking this, maybe there'll be more episodes. Um, but yeah, so thank you very much. Tune in again next time. Like, subscribe, all that shenanigans. And now I have to go cry over the tough decisions I had to make. Oh, that sucks. Oh, that sucks so bad. All right, talk to you next time. Bye-bye.